Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more DCS A10C. The GBU-12 Paveway 2 is based on the Mark 82 general purpose bomb. A nose mounted laser seeker detects the reflected energy of a designating laser and rear fins deflect to manoeuvre the bomb using bang bang guidance. Raytheon, which purchased the product line from Texas Instruments in 1997, claims a circular error probable or CEP of 3.6 feet for Paveway 2. Master Arm, Arm. Laser, Arm. TGP, On. To view the Digital Stores Management System or Dismas page, press OSB 14. Two GBU-12s are loaded on single ejector racks on stations 5 and 7. Six loaded on triple ejector racks on stations 4 and 8. And six loaded on stations 3 and 9. To view the profile main page, press OSB 1. To select the GBU-12 profile, use OSB 19 and OSB 20 to cycle the list. To make the profile active, press OSB 17. To view the profile control page, press OSB 3. Set release options as desired. To view the profile settings page, press OSB 16. Laser time sets the time in seconds before bomb impact, when the laser will start to illuminate the target. For best accuracy, set this to 8 seconds. If a value of 0 is entered, a 4 second laser time will be used. To set laser time to 8 seconds, enter 8 in the scratch pad, and press OSB 17. The laser will automatically fire if auto lays is set to on. To set auto lays to on, press OSB 6. Solution has two options, optimal release point and ballistic release point. ORP is the standard release method. When using a ballistic release point, the IFFCC releases the bomb at the correct point for its ballistic trajectory, allowing it to be used at a lower altitude and without guidance. To save the profile, press OSB 3. And to return to the status page, press OSB 1. Laser designators and seekers use a pulse coding system. The pulse coding is based on pulse repetition frequency, or PRF. When using the same code, the seeker will track only the designated target. Each station can have a shared or unique code. The default code for each station and the TGP is 1688. If you wish to use a different code, it must be changed for each station, as required. To set the laser code, first open the inventory page by pressing OSB 5. Press the corresponding OSB for the station you wish to edit. To select GBU, press OSB 8. In this example, we're using GBU-12s. To select GBU-12s, press OSB 19. Enter the desired laser code in the scratch pad and press OSB 7. 
Valid laser codes are between 1681 and 1689. To confirm the change, press OSB 9. To select the air to ground page, press OSB 2. To select the air to ground control page, press OSB 1. The laser code must match the Dismas laser code. To set the laser code, enter the code in the scratch pad and press OSB 18. When latch is set to on, a single press of the laser designate button activates the laser. The laser will continue firing until the button is pressed a second time. When set to off, the laser will fire when the button is pressed and will stop firing when it's released. The yardstick can be cycled between metric USA and off. When in metric or USA, yardstick distance is shown in meters or feet. The distance of the right half of the crosshair is displayed to its right. To cycle the yardstick setting, press OSB 8. To return to the main air to ground page, press OSB 1. To make the TGP sensor of interest or soy, press coolie hat right long. Slew the crosshairs over the desired target. To ground stabilize in either area or point track mode, press TMS forward short. In area track mode, the TGP is stabilized on the area and not a specific object. If area track cannot be maintained due to masking, it reverts to inertial area or INR-A mode and will attempt to retract the area when masking is eliminated. In point track mode, the TGP is stabilized on a specific object. It will continue tracking even if the object is moving. A fixed size box is drawn over the object. If point track cannot be maintained due to masking, it reverts to INR-P mode until masking is eliminated, then attempts to retract the target. The TGP will remain fixed on a reference point when in inertial mode. Point track is required for moving targets. To make the target SPI, press TMS forward long. Confirm laser status is set to laser. Press TMS right short until laser is selected if required. We're releasing the bombs from 18,000 feet AGL. It's recommended to release above 15,000 feet. To select CCRP master mode, press the master mode control button. CCRP will be displayed in the center of the hood. The azimuth steering line, or ASL, indicates the heading to the target. Align the projected bomb impact line, or PBIL, on the ASL. Ensure the targeting pod has clear line of sight to the target. If the target is masked, the M indication will appear on the hood. The situational awareness cue on the TGP can be used to monitor this. The SAQ represents the current TGP line of sight. A small circle called the solution queue appears on the ASL. Next to the queue is the time to release numeric, or TTRN. This indicates the time in seconds until weapon release. As the solution queue descends the ASL, maintain heading so that it passes through the reticle. As 3-9 consent to release mode is used, the solution queue is not required to pass through the PIPA. If auto laser is not set to on, press the nose wheel steering button to fire the laser. Press and hold the weapon release button until release is complete. If the laser is firing, the L laser status indication to the left of the hood will flash. Adjust the speed as required. To the left of the laser status indication is the countdown timer until bomb impact.
feel free to like, comment and subscribe.